Hi, my name is Chris Centeno. I'm the medical director for regenerative sciences and also a medical doctor specializing in interventional pain management. And I'm going to talk today about using adult stem cells to repair partial rotator cuff tears and really for tendon applications or muscle tears. So what is a rotator cuff? Basically it's a, a, a series of muscles around the shoulder that help to stabilize the shoulder. If you think of the rotator cuff as muscles that help to keep the ball in the socket as you lift your arm or do things with your arm. It's very important that the ball and the socket uh, remain aligned because the shoulder is a relatively shallow joint. The rotator cuff muscles are the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and subscapularis. What is a partial rotator cuff tear? Well, the rotator cuff muscle that's most commonly talked about here is the supraspinatus, which I've drawn in here as that rotator cuff muscle. You can see there the ball of the ball and socket bone that I've drawn in and the rotator cuff muscle that inserts on it or attaches to it. So a partial rotator cuff tear is nothing more than an injury that causes not a through and through tear of that muscle, but just a, a gouge out of it or a tear in it. And it usually occurs where the muscle meets the tendon. If it were completely through, then it would be a, uh, a full rotator cuff tear, but I've just drawn in here a partial tear of the rotator cuff. So it's not through and through, but just through part of the muscle slash tendon. A rotator cuff tear in the shoulder, uh, as an example here, we have a 32-year-old white male who was injured in a car crash. This uh, particular patient is a chiropractor, so he's very active with his upper extremities. He manipulates all day, uh, and this was really giving him uh, some fits and starts. He had failed physical therapy, immobilization, and surgical decompression, uh, meaning he had had surgery on his shoulder, and that did not help his problem. A follow-up MRI after his surgery showed a partial tear of the rotator cuff. The only other option for this gentleman was a second surgery with major immobilization required. I don't know if you've ever seen patients walking around with almost like a pillow underneath their um, armpit, uh, but it's that type of immobilization. And surgeons do that to, to shorten the rotator cuff and take some of the pressure off the area the reason is that if you're going to put uh, sutures in the rotator cuff, it's not real strong, so you've got to completely immobilize it and let it heal. Obviously, for uh, this patient as a chiropractor, this was a big problem. So what we did instead is we isolated the stem cells, we culture expanded those and injected those using uh, what's called MRI plan fluoroscopy into the rotator cuff tear. So what that means is we looked at the uh, uh, high-quality uh, MRI image. We saw exactly where the tear was, and then we used that image to plan exactly where we would place the cells via a needle under live x-ray. No bracing or activity restriction was used, which is pretty huge for this gentleman because that meant that he didn't have to stop being a chiropractor. So you see here uh, these images, and they're not real easy to look at if you don't look at these images all day. But you can see the one on the left uh, showing the humeral head, and that's nothing more than the ball, the ball and socket. On top of that is where the rotator cuff is, and you can see it as a small notch there that's taken out of that uh, rotator cuff muscle as it comes across. And I've encircled that in a black dashed circle. If you look at the right or four months after treatment, that little notch is no longer there. So that means that the rotator cuff tear has healed. Again, the most important thing about this patient is he had no activity restriction. He was sore for a couple days after the shot, but he was not immobilized so he could continue working as a chiropractor. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, for more information, see Regenix.com. And again, it's important to know that this type of treatment can be done not only on rotator cuff tears, but other muscle slash tendon tears that occur in different parts of the body. Thanks.